Leo Shang here, host of the Extreme Fully Fishing Channel. Today is June 7th, 2019. It is going to be my outing number 90 of this year. And right now, here in Philadelphia, it is super, super hot, okay? Man, I just got here and I'm already sweating bullets. It's been in the 80s around my area for a few days now and I am already dying. So you can imagine when it gets to the 90s, right? Things are really going to get real around here. But anyways, I am pretty much ready to just uh, head into this little trail that is right behind me that actually leads to a very interesting place. It leads to a creek and a lake. The cool thing about this particular spot that I'm going to be fishing and exploring today is that number one, the creek is right next to the lake, as you will see in this video. And number two, this place has some history. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the interesting and the creepy history of this place, maybe in the outro of this video. I got my ultralight set up with me. Uh, the main plan is really to just hit the little creek and see what native species of fish are around the area, maybe do some micro fishing, you know, always keeping the same objective in mind, right? Try to catch some new species for the live list. I have passed over here so many times in the past, and yet I have never attempted to really fish this portion of the Poquessing Creek, okay? So stay tuned, today should be good. Hopefully we're going to slay. Whew, I just came down from over here, found myself this little run, a tributary of the Poquessing Creek. I hear noises coming from over there, and I also hear noises coming from over there. So, myself, I'm not going to make a lot of noise, and I'm just going to start micro fishing over here in hopes that there's something new around this area. There we go. First species of the day. Yes. It is an eastern black nose dace. The Hinictis atratulus. All right. Let's put it in the photo tank. There we have it, folks. First species of the day. The good old Hinictis atratulus, a.k.a. the eastern black nose dace. Not too unexpected for them to be around here, huh? So I'm just going to release this guy. I'm kind of exploring around here, the little runs, just in hopes that there's something a little bit different or unique that is going to show up. But so far, I have seen only days around the area. So I may make a move or I may fish here a little bit more and see what happens. There we go. Yeah, it's another black nose days. I mean, the eastern black nose days. Apparently, this is all that there is here. Look at that, huh? Fine little sample caught on the Tanago hook. But nothing new and nothing unusual. And this place is a little bit creepy. So I think it is about time for me to head downstream a little bit so I can yell a little bit more in this video. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's leave the little run over here and we're gonna hop up to the lake to check the place out. Maybe catch some more species up there. Let me make sure I don't I don't fall over here because this thing looks like pretty damn pretty darn steep, man. Dang dude. Struggle here is real. There we go. Gosh darn it, man. Whew. Well, I tell you what, good old Dinosaur Lake never changes. Year after year, this place looks exactly the same. Same island in the middle, stagnant water. Probably there's some sunfish down there. The three dinosaurs used to be right in the middle of the island back in the 1950s. By the 70s, they were gone already. There was only the frame, and after that, they just disappeared. Very uh, interesting place, for sure. Yeah. 
There we go. What we got here? Second species, huh? It's just a little bluegill. Yeah, good old Lepomis macrocerus. Stunted by the size of the eye in comparison to its body. Not too unexpected, huh? There we have it, huh? I'm still kind of whispering because this place is still sketching me out, but there we have a good old Lepomis macrocerus, the bluegill. It's still nothing really new for us here today. Our first fish from the lake. Wish I could release this fish a little bit better, but he will have to really, you know, kind of fly out there. So bye bye, buddy. Boom, there he goes. Yo, what's up? What's going on? Maybe. You are. So, oh, I see what you're throwing there, huh? No, it's this. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like. Uh huh. So when I. Uh -huh. I okay. Think, yeah, I show you. Can I just show you? You a YouTuber? I know you are. Can I take a picture with you after this? <laughs> sure, man. Thank you. Oh yeah, yes. I see. Okay, you got a real so back Arion. bad backlash, huh? Arion, he's a YouTuber. He's really famous. I don't know about that. All right, let me see here. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, he is. Yeah, Ooh man, that's a real bad backlash, huh? Yeah, I. I don't know how to do it. All right, that's okay, dude. Let me see if I I'm can really fix it for you, now. but. Uh, really yeah, the first now the first thing that I need you to do here for me though is. I need you to pull the line for me from the outside of the guys, all right? Okay. Just slow, slow, slow. All right, that's good, that's good. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, keep going, keep going. Keep going? Yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, man, I see. It's all messed up to the end here. Pull, pull it, pull it. Yeah, yeah, keep going, keep going. All right, all right, that's good, that's good, that's good. All right, now hold it, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start reeling, all right? All right, okay. thank you. All right, good, good, good. Let me know when it gets to the lure. All right, there you go, you're good to go, dude. dude. Just, just be careful, because you got a little knot over here. So when you cast, this little knot may make you backlash, all right? Okay, thank Otherwise, you. Otherwise, you should be fine. Hell, that's Can fine, I take dude. A yeah, sure. Okay, sure. All right. Ooh, this is a little bit sketchy. <laughs> you know, it's a little bit sketchy when you walk like that and you know if you give a wrong step, you may just fall down. But let's hop to the creek now because this little lake over here, I only really caught bluegill. I'm assuming there may be some more species down there, you know, uh, at the Poquessing Creek. We will see. I see something. I see something small and nice right over there. There we go. What we got here? Oh, yeah, there we have it. That's the species number three for this video. Saw this fella swimming down there from far away. It's a little common shiner, the Luxilus cornutus. This is a male, too, right? It's got the tubercles on its head. Yeah, it is a spawning colors right here. One of my beautiful and favorite shiners around the area because of the red coloration on its fins, right? Let's take a shot and release this guy. There we go, huh? I feel like today there are going to be lots of species showing up in this video. This place looks very, you know, rich when it comes to biodiversity. It is actually my first time fishing this stretch of the creek over here so i'm actually quite excited to see what exactly is going to show up this common shiner right here already makes it all worth it i mean look at the colors on this fish right the luxilus cornutus that means this is pretty crazy native shiner man native shiner to the state of pennsylvania look at the golden the golden marks on its body i know there's a little bit of glare but check it out now huh? Man, really doesn't get more beautiful than that. Swimming right over there. There we go. 
There's another one. Dang, there's a whole school of them around here. Albeit small, yet another species for today. Not too unusual to see the Lepomis auditus around the area, aka the red breast sunfish. That's the fun of microfishing, fellas. You come out here, whoa, drop a little worm down there. Never know what is going to show up, right? I have to say, folks, we got some beautiful native species around the area. Look at that, huh? Good old little red breast sunfish. You guys actually have seen this one plenty on the YouTube channel, right? I'm still looking for those species that I may not have yet on my species list. But so far, it's repetition after repetition. Every time I explore a new creek though, this is what we have to do, you see? We have to just keep casting our lines down there and uh, see what shows up. I mean, this place has so much life, right? My hopes is that by the end of the day, we're going to catch a new species or two. Oh, there's a setting thing. It, that, oh man, I see from over here. That's either a spot thing or a setting thing shiner. I'll try to catch it. It's the one with the white. Oh, I got it. <laughs> I got it. It's the one with the white fins, I was going to say. Check this out, huh? This is a fish of the Cyprinella genus. It is in spawning colors right now. It's got the white fins on its body and its tail. Now, this one right here is either the Cyprinella spiloptera or the Analostana, the spot fin or the setting fin shiner. I'll have to count anal fin rays to kind of find out. So, let me put in the photo tank and we shall find out soon enough. There you go, folks. I just counted the anal rays of this little fella right here. This one turns out to be a setting fin shiner, the, the Cyprinella analostana. Look at those vibrant colors on its dorsal fin. I just would like to point out, right, right next to the black dot here at the end of the dorsal, this fish is a darn beautiful fish in spawning colors. It's got all that white, right, to kind of <laughs> you know, show the females down there who's the boss, right? It's kind of inviting everyone down there like, yeah, it is time, ladies, you know. It is time to do the business down there. Wow, man, that's a nice little sample right here. As soon as I saw it swimming in the water, I knew what it was. Look, look at that, look at that white, bro. See that? That is crazy, dude. You can go back to spawning, okay? Go back to spawning and lay a lot of eggs. Dang, dude. There's fish down there. Truly aggressive. Oh, man. Look at the colors on this one. Holy cow. Look how red this one is. This one is like full spawning mode, no doubt. Look at that, it's a male too. You can see, oh man, this is, no, this, this is beautiful, man. I have to say, you now people can say whatever they want to me, that micro fishing is not worth it. When I see this kind of stuff, it is all worth it, in my personal opinion. You see that contrast of the blue on its face, and then you got the red on the fins. That's a beautiful fish right here, man. Holy cow, look at that. Dang. Oh, what we got here? Is it another species for today? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we got here what seems to be a creek chub, the Semotilus atromaculatus. They're typical creek species, but this creek chub actually looks a little bit weird. Now nah, it is a creek chub, 100%. Folks, all I have to say is that the multi-species fishing slash micro fishing is actually going really good today. This creek chub turns out to be our species number six of the day. And I just started our multi-species session out here. Like I'm going to fish for a few more hours, right? So that already is fascinating. I hope we will be able to break the 10 species barrier in this video, hopefully. But if not, you know, I will be happy regardless, right? Okay, little creek chub. This is a weird one, by the way, but you are free to go. 
All right, go back where you belong, son. See, he's swimming right over there. Back to the pool. I would like to emphasize that in creeks like this, I am fishing right next to a little rift, right? That it becomes a deep pool. So over here is one of the deeper areas in the creek where the fish like to congregate and just swim around the, I mean, uh, against the current in search for food, right? Every time I give a cast right around this hole, I'm getting a bite almost instantaneously, which makes it, of course, a very good spot to fish at. Wow, it's a green sunfish. That's why it was fighting so interestingly, huh? Yet another species for today, Lepomis cyanellus from the creek. Mmm, there you have it, huh, folks? His species number seven of the day. This dude is actually a mean dude, even though he doesn't look like it. The green sunfish, doesn't matter where you find it, is always a bully. <laughs> to the other species of fish, right? It's got a big mouth too. I'm sure this one has been eating some shiners down there. All right, there you go. Well, at this point, I've been fishing this particular hole for about one hour now. I think I've already caught all the bigger species in this hole, so I just tied on the Tanago hook again. I'm going to attempt to catch some smaller species to see if I missed something. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, I'm going to start wading this creek downstream and start hitting the other holes along the way. Oh, there we go. I think this is different. I think we didn't catch this one today yet. Oh no, it fell on the ground, dude. Into the photo tank. It goes, dude. Into the photo tank. It goes. This is pretty crazy, folks. I didn't expect today to be so productive, multi-species wise. This is actually our species number eight of the day. It is a little swallowtail shiner, the Notropis procne. Look at that, huh? It's got the black lateral line over here. I took enough shots of this guy already. As a matter of fact, I got one of these inside my fish tank at home, <laughs> inside my 10 gallon tank. It is a beautiful little guy, super aggressive. It takes like worms, like no one else. Look at that, huh? There we go, little swallowtail shiner. The small ones need some love too, right? So there you have it. Species number eight of the day, and I am not done yet. Oh, I got it. That's another species for today. Yay, son! I'm losing count of how many species we got already, but this is the banded killifish. Oh man, the Fundulus diaphanus. I was trying to catch one of these down there for a good, good while, man. And when I say good, good while, let me just give you guys an idea of what good, good while means, okay? This is the hardships that we multi-species anglers have to go through that is a good good while all right <laughs> look how many other species i caught before getting that banded killifish the fundulus diaphanus you see what i'm saying now we've got a combination here inside here of satin fin shiner swallowtail shiner and then there's one banded killifish the struggle is real sometimes folks Boy, oh boy, I think we are currently at the count of nine, nine different species of fish in this video, all micros, this is turning out to be an exceptional micro fishing expedition, can you guys actually recognize which one of these fellas is the fundulus, <laughs> the killifish? Well, you know, if you don't know, right, it is this one here, right on the corner, all the way on the corner back there, okay, that's the banded killifish, this little fella right here. We got maybe one, two, three, four, we got four swallowtail shiner in here. I know it is not the spottail shiner, the Notropis hudsonius, because collection sites at this particular creek have only produced swallowtail shiner in the past, and then we got 
some satin fin shiner in here as well, right? One, two, three satin fin shiner. That's a beautiful combination of micros right here. I'm going to let all of them go right now and hopefully before of the, the end of this video today, I will be able to catch 10 different species of micros, okay? All right, it's all gone. Back where they belong. Boy, it has been a long day of fishing so far, but our quest for micro species is going great. I think I kind of depleted this hole. <laughs> I mean, a hole can only hold so many fish, right? So I'm going to start heading downstream in search of other holes to see if we can actually catch 10 different species of fish in this video. This hole actually looks pretty darn juicy. Ain't gonna lie. Oh yeah, knew it. I knew this hole would be able to hold some fish. Holy mackerel! This does not count as a new species for today. But is this just a green sunfish? This doesn't look just like a green sunfish. This looks like a green sunfish bluegill hybrid, right? You can kind of see it. the body shape is a little bit more, you know, oval than it's supposed to be. Not to mention the blue mark right here at the bottom of the operculum, right? This is a hybrid, so it doesn't count as a new species, but a cool catch regardless. Dang, son. At this point, I'm just looking for like some type of uh, bass or something to make it 10 species. Did not expect a little hybrid to actually show up right in front of me, right? I mean, don't take me wrong, it's a beautiful fish for sure, <laughs> but that doesn't make it 10 at all. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, it always saddens me to say this, but once again, I have run out of time. We're finishing the day. I mean, don't take me wrong. Today was a wonderful day of fishing out here in this wonderful environment right i even mentioned in the intro of this video the fun thing about this particular place is that you have a lake on one side and then you have a creek on the other side right two very different type uh, type of environments right here for you to explore right and i finished the day with like nine different species of fish plus one hybrid not to mention that i caught i've caught like plenty of fish today right i'm currently soaking bait right over here i've been soaking bait for the last like 30 minutes uh try to catch a little catfish or a little carp and it's like nothing right but let me give you guys a little fun fact of the day before i finish this video actually two fun facts of the day one a little bit fun and one a little bit not so much fun okay they are all history related Back in the 1950s, all right, the name of this place, by the way, is Dinosaur Lake. And back in the 1950s, there used to be three dinosaurs right on that island, right? I actually pulled a photo from the Philadelphia Old Images Archive so that you, can, you guys can see it. Nowadays, there are no dinosaurs anymore. I may have mentioned briefly about this in this video earlier today. By the 1970s, the dinosaurs were already gone. There were only the frames over there. And then after that, 2019 is just like nothing. It's just like an overgrown lake over here. But back in the days, the guy who used to own this pond called this place Dinosaur Lake because of those three dinosaurs. And the story goes that he used to let all the kids from the community back in the days to come here and play around with the dinosaurs and even swim, right? Second fact of the day about this particular place that it is a little bit is sketchy. Back in the 1970s, there, there was a crime here in Philadelphia that kind of disgusted the entire community. It was the Dolores de la Pena case, right? You guys can actually Google it up. It was an unsolved case that happened in the 1970s and this 17 year old girl Dolores she was dismembered beheaded and uh, and died right and the thing is folks found parts of her body um, 
in different places in New Jersey, but her head was never found. Uh, you may be like, well, Leo, what, how, how is that related to this particular place, right? Back in the 70s, believe it or not, the authorities came to this particular pond right here, Dinosaur, Dinosaur Lake, and they dredged this pond, okay? Nobody exactly knows why, but the rumor at the time was that they dredged this place to look for Dolores' um, head. You know what I'm saying? So it's a little bit of interesting and creepy at the same time, right? Up to this day, it's 2019, that crime is still unsolved. But anyways, this is it for today. Enough fishing, uh, enough fun facts of the day. I will see you guys next time. Thank you for staying with me, you know, through this video, if you made it this far, okay? I know that micro fishing and native species is not like everyone's gig out there, but the small ones deserve some love as well, right? So tie lines, folks, I'll see you all next time. Take it easy. Okay, you will have to pardon me for I believe that this is a protected species in this state and I had absolutely no clue when it came up. I am releasing the fish after taking a few photos. I did not know that this was a protected species. You know, it came all very, it all happened very, very fast.